Your reader is important. Everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my beautiful wife, Brooke. <sighs> Never gets old. And now on to our topic. Your reader is important. For those of you based in the Southeast, you've probably been self-taping auditions since before 2010. I know I have. So collectively, as a market, we are veritable experts in the arena of self-taping. Other markets like Los Angeles and New York will catch up, eventually. But wherever you are geographically, or in your self-taping journey, it's worth discussing the importance of your reader. Now, I just had the privilege to interview one of the top casting directors in the Southeast, and she admitted that she used to think that the reader didn't matter, but not anymore. So let's dive into why that might be. There are some obvious points that I want to make, and then maybe some new insight that you weren't expecting. The first topic I want to cover is the technical aspects of your reader. Every casting director will warn you in their taping instructions about having a reader that's too loud. And if you're using a phone with no external microphone, then if they are standing right next to the camera lens, they will be too loud because they are standing closer to the microphone than you. A quick fix is to have them take a few steps back so that they are further from the microphone than you are. Then they can talk at a conversational volume that makes sense for the scene. However, another fix, get an external microphone. The other technical aspect I want to talk about in regards to your reader is where they stand for your eye line. Now we talked about eye lines in last week's video, link in the description below. So they want to stand as close to the lens as possible. Because if your eye line is too far off camera, it just looks weird. When they stand closer to the camera, it brings the viewer closer into your performance. Can you feel that? Now let's shift gears and talk about the performance of the reader. This is a nuance often overlooked by actors who are new to self-taping. And if you're in a market like Los Angeles or New York, you might even hear casting directors completely dismiss the following topic. So let's talk about it anyway. In short, your reader must be an actor for your audition to be at its best. See, most actors would agree that in-person auditions are preferred. They want to be there with the casting director. And so they think of self-taping as a liability. If that's true for you, then why would you compound that by having a reader who isn't an actor? Furthermore, the scene is not just about you. It's a dialogue in the cases where you need a reader. And so that reader is going to have to carry a substantial portion of the scene. If they read too slow for a four camera sitcom audition, or they don't understand the pacing of an Aaron Sorkin audition, or they are stuttering or stumbling over the medical jargon in a procedural, then your reader is slowly chipping away at your brilliant performance. And if your reader is too flat or monotone in their performance, you're left to imagine what a real co-star would be feeding you. Now, you might be used to that from your in-person auditions with certain casting directors who just read the words very blandly and then stare at you, judging during your entire performance. But at least in those situations, every other actor is on equal footing. And you get the benefit of the casting director redirecting you if they felt like you missed the mark. So again, when you're self-taping, why compromise this at all by using a non-actor? Or worse, by recording yourself saying the reader's lines and then playing that back during your audition recording. I get it, sometimes you're in a pinch and you gotta do what you gotta do, but that should never be your default for self-taping. If you can't get another human in the room with you, then go online and find a reader that way. There are apps for that. And I wanna make one last point about your reader. I don't know about your training, but in all the acting classes and improv classes that I took, every teacher would reinforce this idea that the most important character in the scene is the other person, not you. So if you have a reader that understands this nuance, then it'll be their mission to give you exactly enough to elevate your performance to its best. That's a skill, for sure. And it's why taping services should provide that at a bare minimum. At Get Taped, we're very sensitive to the fact that in order to keep our doors open, we have to charge money to actors. We're actors, we hate that. But we have so many loyal customers because we do our darndest to elevate every actor to their best performance possible by giving them exactly what they need as the reader. In short, there are so many things in this career you cannot control, but your reader is 100% in your control. And while a cast director may not notice a good reader, they will definitely notice a bad one. One corollary to this topic, if your audition sides heavily favor you and your reader only has a couple words, then it's not a big deal if you have a non-actor or a less-than-stellar reader. 
But as soon as those scripts start involving more dialogue from the reader, don't let that reader become a liability. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic, so drop a comment below. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on set.